Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight I have a collection of haunted house stories for you to listen to. But before you fall asleep, make sure you hit the bell icon and subscribe to be notified every time I post. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. My house was built in the 90s, and my family has lived in it upon its completion. There is absolutely no reason for my house to be haunted or demonic, yet unnatural things have always happened in my home. I've heard footsteps in the attic, and have felt uneasiness, but mostly things that I could reasonably explain as, oh, squirrels, maybe I'm just scared for no reason. That was until a few years ago. Every Christmas, my family would come over and stay the holidays in my house. I was around 16, and my room was taken over by my uncle, meaning I had to pack my stuff and move to the couch in the living room, right next to the Christmas tree. One night I was trying to get to sleep earlier than usual, around 9pm. I just wanted the night to be over with and I was lying there listening to the Christmas tunes my tree played, when suddenly I could hear small, silent whispers. I tried listening closely since it sounded like it was coming from the tree. I wanted to confirm it was, and was bored and couldn't sleep anyway. But the whispers only got louder. It was unintelligible. The whispers were clear, yet I couldn't hear anything they were saying. I got up and stared at the tree and asked, Who's whispering? Everything turned dead silent, except for the sound of O Little Town of Bethlehem playing from the tree. Staring at the tree, I took it as I was losing my mind and laid back down pretending nothing had happened. That's when all hell broke loose. A loud and clear whisper, as if right next to my ear, said, He can hear us. And a barrage of voices overwhelmed me. I'm tearing up remembering it. I could hear the whispers this time. Help us. Save us. I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to run, but I was scared to acknowledge that I could hear them. Finally, I got up and ran like hell to the room where my parents were watching a movie. I don't really know how to end my experience. I slept in their room, and since then, I am yet to hear the voices. It's weird. When I recount to remember this experience, I begin to tear up for some reason. Whenever I sleep outside of my normal bedroom, you know, like in a hotel or something like that, I hear this strange sound. It almost sounds like someone is sighing or exhaling. It's somewhere in the room, but I can never find out where it's coming from. It sounds like there is someone else sleeping in the room with me. I can hear this noise if the lights are on, and I still cannot find the source of the noise. It's really strange. I've tried taking photos and videos with my smartphone, but when I play them back, I get nothing. I turn the lights off squint and wait for my eyes to become adjusted to the darkness, and sometimes I feel like there's something amidst the darkness. I can't be sure, though. It feels like there is something in the room with me now, and then there's some kind of shape. It's pretty creepy. I get worried whenever I hear the sighing exhaling noise, and it's become impossible to ignore it. I first noticed it last September, and once I heard it, there was no way to unhear it. I travel a lot for work, and my company seems to have this wonderful skill where they're able to locate the cheapest and most out-of-the-way hotels that money can buy. I guess maybe sleeping in all these rundown motels and hotels could have created this nervousness and perhaps I'm imagining things. Well, that was what I thought until the other night. I heard the same sound at home, the one place I hadn't heard it before. It happened when I came home late from work. I remember I bought pasta that night and I was eating it at the kitchen table. My whole family were asleep and my eyes were really dry, so I reached for the eye drops and put some in the eyes. I'm still sat at the kitchen table at this point, when I hear that strange sighing sound. I wanted to open my eyes, but since I had just put the drops in, I couldn't open them straight away, so I slowly opened my right eye just a bit and looked around the kitchen. And of course, like always, there was nothing there. 
it was new. Like I'd said, I'd only ever heard it when I was away from home, but that night I heard it in my own. I was annoyed now. I wanted some answers. I wasn't in a hotel, I was home. So I could investigate as much as I felt like. I looked around the kitchen, but the sound wasn't coming from there. Perhaps the hall? No. Over towards the back door, perhaps? No, I couldn't find it. I was really straining my ears while searching. I felt like the sound was definitely in the kitchen, and I left the room and walked back in to reset and get a fresh perspective. As soon as I re-entered the kitchen, I heard the sound, and it sounded like it was coming from somewhere near the refrigerator. The thought that it was just a mechanical noise, and I had had too many late nights, crossed my mind until I heard the sound mixed in with the dull hum of the refrigerator. It's here. I know it's around here. I thought that while I was bending over searching for it. The sound was louder for the first time. It felt like I was getting closer, and with that in mind I decided to hit the lights to see if it made a difference. Usually I needed some time to allow my eyes to adjust to the darkness, and that's when I felt like I could almost see something. But, that night, something was different. My left eye, I could see very clearly from that eye in the dark, I guess because I kept my left eye shut while I was searching around the kitchen, which was interesting. My vision seemed to improve a bit more with my right eye shut too. A moment later, I saw two white dots emerge out of the darkness. I quickly realized that these may be the whites of someone's eyes. Then I could see the pupils of the eyes. They were dark and looking directly at me. I gasped in shock. I'd never seen anything like that before. I kept looking. I couldn't stop and to my surprise, I could see the figure of someone, the owner of those eyes. It looked as if they were tied up, their limbs clearly bound, their mouth wasn't really visible. I realized why there was tape on the mouth. The sound I was hearing was the inhalation and exhalation through their nose. I could sense that there was no panic in this person. There was just some aura of hopelessness and acceptance. They were not fighting against their situation. The atmosphere in the darkness of my kitchen was that of pure desolation and surrender. The steady patient exhales and inhales continually. I watched in stunned horror and couldn't move. After a few moments, the figure of the bound person appeared to become blurry and then faded to darkness completely. To this day, I have no idea why this person, or perhaps I should say this apparition appeared to me. I haven't heard the breathing again in my home. I really wish I knew more about the poor soul and I wonder if I will ever hear it again. Next week, I'm going to go on another business trip too, and I'll do the same thing I did last time in an attempt to see the bound person again. I will use my eye drops and get accustomed to the darkness. Perhaps I will see them then. I am not sure. I am both excited and terrified, and if I find anything out, I will let you know. This happened around three years ago, when I started living alone. I moved into a really nice place. It was a corner apartment on the top floor. I loved it. My balcony was south facing and the windows were huge, which made for some awesome views. There was one issue though, the partition between my balcony and next doors. It wasn't very high or wide. There were big gaps between the walls and the partition as well. I could see into next door's balcony, and I guess they'd be able to do the same. Also, it didn't look that safe. Anyone could just break it down or climb it. I guess that the partition had to be like that in case of an emergency. I didn't like it all that much though. The rent was cheap, and the building was old, so I didn't care. Typical for a single man, I suppose. Now, I love all things scary and I have a vivid imagination, so I would creep myself out imagining someone staring at me through the gaps. I didn't know why my mind did that. It never happened, by the way. The only time I'd ever seen the neighbor was an awkward interaction when we were doing our laundry at the communal laundry machines at the same time. One night, I came back from a night out drinking with my work colleagues and it was quite late. 
I was really tired and wanted to do nothing but sleep, but I then realized I had no clean clothes for work the next day. It couldn't be helped. I had to get the washing done. I felt like an idiot and a really terrible neighbor since it was going to make a lot of noise with me going back and forth to the laundry room. When the laundry was done, I went to put out all of it on the clothesline to dry outside. It was a cold night, but there was enough wind to dry my clothes. As I was walking to the balcony door, a thought came creeping back into my mind. Is someone going to be out there, hiding, staring at you? For some reason, I imagined a woman soaked in blood. When I saw her face in my mind's eye, I shuddered. I knew that there would be no one out there, though. How could there be? It was just my imagination, though, right? I stepped out onto the balcony and forced myself to look through the gaps into the partition to put my mind at ease. There was no one there. Relieved, I went about my business, but then stopped in my tracks when I heard something. The sound of something scratching. It was very jaunty in the quiet of the night, especially since my imagination was running away with me. The scratching sound was loud. I wondered if it could perhaps be a hanger in the wind. I listened a little closer and realized it could not be a hanger scraping against something. It didn't sound metallic. It sounded like someone scratching their nails on a piece of wood. A horrible chilling wind had begun to blow and despite the cold, I realized I was sweating. I hated that I scared myself. I told myself that it was just my neighbor and they were just out on the balcony at the same time I was. I then looked for myself through one of the gaps in the partition and I noticed that the lights were off. The strange scratching sound continued. I was standing there thinking, at the age of 30, I had finally experienced something paranormal. The thought profoundly frightened me. I knew that I would have to turn and pass the gap in the partition to return to my apartment. It was like some horrible test of courage. I turned to go back inside, and I knew the second I turned towards the gap, I would see something, perhaps that woman. It sounds like I'm making something out of nothing, but there really was something strange out on the balcony at night. The vision of a bloodstained woman leapt to the forefront of my mind again. I hated my imagination. Why was the image so prominent? How long did I stand there frozen, unable to think of anything beside the image? Five? Ten minutes? I couldn't tell you. However long it was, it was long enough for me to realize that the scratching sound had stopped. The balcony was now silent. I felt relieved and I blamed myself for overthinking. I was working myself up over nothing. Perhaps there was no ghost, no neighbor hiding. Maybe it was just an animal or a gust of wind. I had talked myself down from overreacting. And just as I was mentally telling myself off for watching too many horror films, I heard a large thud against the partition. It was horribly loud. My heart stopped for a moment. Someone was there. They had to be. My intuition was right. My eyes were then fixed at the location of the sound and I couldn't move. I couldn't see anything through the gap. That is when I saw a jet black hand slowly wrap its hand around the outside of the balcony partition and ahead, slowly crept around the corner and stared at me. I couldn't see through its hair in the darkness of the night, but it was there. It was horrifying to realize I wasn't alone, after all my suspicions. It was staring at me. It was so horrible. I burst into my room, pulled the door shut and locked it and closed the curtains. I left my apartment and stayed with a friend that night. I don't think I returned to my place for at least a week. Thank goodness for good friends, huh? He even went back to my place to retrieve some things. Even though it felt so real, I still try and tell myself it could have been some sort of hallucination. The horror of having your worst fears confirmed in the dead of night is something I wish upon no one.
or perhaps the hallucination theory is easier and more comforting to believe, or perhaps just makes the incident easier to forget. Days or weeks after that night, I forget which, I went to speak with my neighbour. His son was at university, and he told me that in the past he had complained to the building management. He said it sounded as if people were on his balcony every night. He thought it was someone trying to break in, but he couldn't be sure, as there was never anyone there. It was almost comforting to know that I wasn't alone in my experience. I thought my experience was bad, but the neighbour seemed to have had it worse. Whatever was going on was on their balcony after all. That's as far as my story went. All I can tell you is I left the apartment and haven't lived in an apartment with a balcony since, as these experiences haunt me to this day. About two years ago, I had a quite nice and strange job as a companion and office manager to a countess who lived in a castle in the country. The castle was built in 1730 and was the residence of a very famous noble family. My dog would never enter the small chapel because of the polished marble floor, I guess, but run around the other parts of the castle very merrily. But in front of the chapel, he would growl, raise his fur and turn around. He spooked the tourists completely out with it every time. After about three weeks, I felt for the first time that I knew what haunted meant. Before that particular feeling, I'd never felt this before, anywhere else, before or after leaving the castle. It's very hard to describe. It came down on me in the dining room, when all of a sudden, it was like a heavy dark cloud spread over all, like a feeling of something jumping on your breast. It grew heavier, darker and stronger the longer I stayed there. I could not bear to spend the night there anymore. Every day I have a very strong feeling of, get out of here now. After six months, I left the job because of this eerie feeling. It was with a very heavy heart because I really liked the old lady. The most terrifying thing for me was to get to know what haunted feels like and would not recommend to be curious about it. My house was haunted growing up. Lights would turn on when no one was there, televisions would turn on downstairs, and the volume would get turned up all the way during the horror murder scenes. Doors would pop open into the middle of the night and then slam. Friends would come over not knowing any of these details and start to feel the presence and freak out. We had a painter quit on sight when he first bought the house because while he was upstairs, someone was sweeping. He came down and there was no one there, and he would go back upstairs and the walking and sweeping would start again. I still have dreams about someone buried under the barn in the back. It's right next to a graveyard and a woman actually died in my old room. Nothing negative happened directly to me once we got a dog when we moved in. But prior to that, I seemed to be its target. After that, it was just random stuff around the house until I moved out. A year ago, I had to go back because my dad died and a door slammed right in front of me when I said out loud, is there still something in this house? It was crazy because it was one of those doors that you really had to push to get it shut completely. I always wanted to have ghost hunters come and visit, but my mum just sold it last month. Almost 25 years ago, when I was probably eight, my family moved into this large, old house that was probably built in the early 1900s. It was a two-story Victorian-style house that had laundry chutes that led to a large concrete basement where the washing machine and dryers were. There was this weird room in the basement that seemed out of place and disturbing. It was a room no larger than a closet, with an old claw foot tub and shower head, and a way to padlock it from the outside, but no way to lock it from the inside. I still think about this room, and wonder why it was set up in that way. The house had a mostly good feeling to it, except for the basement. 
Eventually, my very superstitious stepmother became so uncomfortable going into the basement to do laundry that she made my dad convert the mudroom into a laundry room so that she wouldn't have to go downstairs anymore. My dad thought she was being ridiculous, but he did it anyway. We lived in the house for a few years, and at some point the feeling in the house started to shift. Little things started to happen. Nothing too concerning, though. My stepsister eventually started to feel really uncomfortable in her room upstairs. She said she felt like someone was watching her when she slept, and she had a hard time sleeping. She started sleeping more during the day on the couch and in the living room, or would just sleep in the room with me. Our cats would act funny. They'd puff up with pupils full and stare at seemingly nothing, just little things that were freaky but nothing too crazy. One day my stepmom took me with her to pick up some lunch for everyone, and when we were driving towards the house, I could vividly see someone wearing all black like a full-on cape, standing in my stepsister's window watching us. My stepmom saw it too, and she freaked out and had my dad and stepbrother do a whole search of the house. They found nothing, and thought we were being paranoid, and figured we had seen a shadow or something. Eventually, my dad and stepbrother started feeling uneasy in the house too. Sometimes you could hear what sounded like someone walking up the basement stairs, and my dad would grab a bat and be ready to confront whoever it was. This sort of thing continued for a while. I've asked my dad about it, and he says, Man, that house would freak me out. I'd hear those footsteps and I'd grab a flashlight and a bat. I'd puff up my chest, open the door, and run down those stairs swinging, ready to kill whatever was there. It got to the point where everyone was on edge in the house. The final straw of us moving was when my stepbrother went to open a window in his upstairs room, and both of his arms went straight through the window. The last time I talked to him was a few years ago, but even then, he still swears someone pushed him, despite being the only person upstairs. He had to be rushed to the emergency room, where they had to remove huge shards of glass from his arms and stitched him back up. He has very gnarly scars from it. We have moved from that house, and eventually the old lady that owned it sold it. I don't think she could keep tenants for very long, but that was just me speculating. Where the house sat is now a car dealership. Supposedly the house itself was moved from the property and is still somewhere in the town I live in. I've never seen it though, and have no interest in finding it. One time my cousin and I were playing hide and seek, casually at my mum's friend's house on a Friday in the afternoon. We always played upstairs at her house when her son wasn't home. Then my cousin came out of his hiding spot, looking kinda off. He said he heard a scratching noise and mimicked it on the print of his shirt. I don't know, but for whatever reason something told me to go downstairs. I told my cousin to go downstairs and he said no, and that everything was fine. But the lock in his face told me otherwise. So I finally got him to go downstairs and we sat down, and that's when everything hit the fan. We heard footsteps upstairs, and it sounded like they were going to go down, but whenever I looked up there was no one there. My cousin and I sat downstairs quietly, and even heard angry breathing next to our ears like someone was right next to us, but no one was there. It all stopped until my mum and her friend came out of the room that was right downstairs, and suddenly, all of it stopped like nothing happened. I'm not crazy, and I know I wasn't the only one that heard this. I asked my cousin if he heard the breathing, and he confirmed it, and even said, without prompting, that it sounded angry, and mimicked the way it sounds. To this day, I still remember it like it was yesterday, and I don't think I've ever felt a fear so intense as I did so in that day. My grandfather, who I have always called Paw Paw, moved into a lake house in the US. He lives in a not old, but not so new, two-story house with a basement and four bedrooms. To help you visualize the layout, the stairs lead into a medium-sized living room. Your next option is to either head to the left and down a hallway. In the hallway, there is a closet with a crawl space. 
This door does not have a lock on it. The room further down the hallway is a bathroom, nothing special about it. If you look to the right of the bathroom, there is a bedroom with a large closet that has a sliding door and mirrors on them. But at the very end of the hallway, there is a storage room. The storage room is always locked, and I have never been inside it before. Now, if we backtrack into the living room, there are only two doors left downstairs. One is to a small bedroom with no windows or a closet. On the other side of the wall behind it is another storage room. Walking into the next door, you'll find a play area for the grandkids. He put in a hockey table along with a ping pong table. Beside that there is nothing else. I just mentioned a door leading to the storage room behind the bedroom. The light never works there. So my poor paw's house had creeped me up since the beginning. It wasn't that the house looked bad or was in poor condition. It was that my brain had set itself into fight or flight mode when I entered it. I told myself to quit being such a wuss and explore the house. I brushed it off as being nervous. It was a new house in a new city after all, and it was much further from his original house in the woods. A good two hours probably. I checked the upstairs out and calmed myself down a bit while my sister ran off to play with my cousins. I finished looking around the first half of his house and made my way down the stairs towards the basement. It was a fully finished basement, but even with lights, it still felt poorly lit with dark and uninviting corners. I opened the door and peeked into all the rooms until one was left in the downstairs living room, the game room. This room was meant for storage and had no windows. Every time somebody walked upstairs, you could hear a very loud creaking from the bare wooden boards above your head. The lights were a blinding white when turned on, but as soon as you flicked the switch, it is pure black. If you were to put your right hand in front of your face, you would not be able to see it. The game room has multiple metal shelves and game boxes laying everywhere. To finish it off, there is a large ping pong table right smack dab in the middle of the carpet. Being alone in the basement all by myself made me really jumpy, and my senses were all on high alert. A barely audible scratching noise had emitted from the storm room. The longer I sat there, the louder it got, until it quickly exited the room, closing the door behind me. It was impossible for anyone else to be in the room with me. Everybody else was upstairs, and if someone were to enter, I would have heard the creaking above my head. Creepy as hell. Another time during the summer, when the lake water was warm, my cousin, my sister and I stayed the night to go swimming the next day. We jokingly talked about how creepy the house was and how funny it would be if a ghost were in the basement. All three of us decided to bunk out in the king-size bed in the guest room downstairs. After a while of giggling and pestering, all of us said goodnight and cuddled up to sleep. Not even ten minutes later, I heard footsteps outside my room. My poor paw had probably come to check in on us. Then, to my horror, I heard loud snoring from the master bedroom. It in fact was not him. I shook my cousin and sister awake to listen, and they all agreed they had heard walking too. My eyes made their way to the bottom of the door, staring at the little crack. You could visibly see feet shuffling back and forth. Before I could grasp, the feet stopped right in front of our bedroom door. I held my breath and lay there too terrified to move. They stayed like that for God knows how long. After a while, they began moving back and forth again. It then got worse. Soft tapping from the wall behind our bed started up. It was like somebody on the opposite side of the wall was flicking their knuckles against the thin plaster that separated the bedroom from the storm room. All of us hid under our covers and didn't say a word, eventually all passing out from exhaustion. In the morning while sitting at breakfast, I questioned my poor paw about last night. He told me he had not gotten up to check on us at all that night, and had actually turned that TV off upstairs and went straight to bed. All of us kids glanced at each other saying nothing and continued to shove syrupy pancakes into our cheeks. The very last time I had ever experienced something strange in his house was during late summer with my sister and multiple other cousins. 
There were around six of us. All of us wanted to play hide-and-seek in his large house, and as the eldest, I was seeking first. One by one, I found all of my cousins. The only person left was my sister. All of my cousins agreed to help me search for her around the house. I tried to look in the closet again, in the basement, but it was glued shut. In frustration, I began rattling it to try and pry the door open. I couldn't remember if it had a lock or not. I loudly knocked on the door and ordered my sister to come out since we had found her. After 20 seconds of silence, I tried again, but now I was becoming pissed off. All four cousins joined in on helping me open the door, but it wouldn't budge. Making our way upstairs to ask Paw Paw to open the door, my sister jumped out behind a vase and scared us all. I angrily asked her why she locked the door to the closet, and she gave me a confused look. She informed me she had no clue what I was talking about, and that she had been in her current hiding spot the whole time. She laughed as she bragged about us walking past her at least five different times, but stopped after watching the colour drain from all our faces when she understood what happened. Every time we stay over at my pawpaws, we always bring up stories and talk about them. All of my cousins believe his basement, if not his whole house, is haunted. What do you think? I believe my house is haunted, and here is the story. About five years ago, we moved into the current house. And when we did so, we were informed by the previous owners that someone had tragically passed away in the house due to lung cancer. Well, that was good to know. About every night, once we moved in, we would hear a peculiar banging on the walls. It really freaked us out. As you can imagine, we tried to investigate but never found a thing. And when it wasn't the banging, we would smell fresh smoke. This continued for a while, but eventually it did sort of subside, and the banging on the walls stopped completely. But us smelling fresh smoke never went away, as none of us smoke. Also, every once in a while, the smoke alarms would randomly go off. It really crept us out. I'm not entirely sure what it is or if the house is haunted, but maybe the person who died of lung cancer in this house still comes back every once in a while for the occasional cigarette. My story begins with my first experience with the paranormal at my grandparents' house. I later learned of a few ghosts that were at their residence for decades, which makes sense. I was eight years old and stayed the night at my grandparents. It was a pretty old house built around 1890 or so. They got me settled in for the night and went to bed themselves. I don't know what time it was, but I clearly remember that I was tired and wanted to go to sleep when all of a sudden my eyes popped open and I was fully awake and scared because I had that feeling that someone or something was watching me. My heart began to beat faster and began looking around the guest room to see what was causing me to feel what I was feeling. Then, very quickly and with impressive force, the blankets and the sheets were jerked off me by the foot of the bed. I still get chills thinking about that. Of course, I ran as fast as I could to my grandparents' room, woke them up and told them what happened. They acted like it was no big deal, like they were used to such things. Nevertheless, they let me sleep with them that night. Years later, I told my mum what had happened. What she told me shocked me. She informed me that there were in fact at least three entities in that house, those being the old man in the hat, the old woman in the rocking chair, and the peepers. The old man was mostly around the outside, kind of on patrol, and was always on the move. The old woman was always upstairs in this old rocking chair and usually making it rock back and forth. Peepers? Well, it was everywhere in the house and that's why they named it Peepers. My mum and her siblings would be playing or just walking through the house when whoever would see Peepers' eyes looking at them. It would be behind the couch, through the cracks in the doors, after you open them, even from the upper corner of the doorways. It appeared wherever, and the most often of the three. Nothing like that happened to me again until I was 13. My mother had married another man, and we all moved into the house. It was around 80 years old at the time. 
The next part gets a little crazy. I don't remember the exact dates, but at one point, my younger brother and I shared a bedroom, a bunk bed. I don't know when this started, but at some point we slept with Bibles and knives under our pillow. And we read at least one Bible verse every night and went to church and prayed all the time for protection. The door, which was a heavy door, would close slowly but not completely on its own due to not being set right. So it was held open by a big nail in the corner of the door and a hanger which was stretched and hooked onto said big nail and a little high chubby hole storage area doorknob which led to my mum and stepfather's closet. One night Chris and I awoke at the same time for reasons unknown. Very shortly after we woke, that hanger which was quite secure in its place flew off and went around the bedroom, exited the room, took a right and landed in the kitchen sink. I estimate the total distance it flew to be around 25 to 28 feet, but it didn't end there. That door, which normally would slowly begin to close as soon as the hanger was off, did not close slowly at all. Instead, it stayed open until the hanger flew out of our room, and then it slammed shut very hard, scared the hell out of us. Another night, I was fast asleep. I was awoken by my brother straight up yelling at me to get up. Something was hurting him, and he couldn't move. I quickly grabbed my knife, got out of bed, and turned the light on. My brother was then able to move, and yes, he did hurt. His right eye was swollen, he had scratches and marks around his neck, and his right shoulder was very marked up. He then asked me to sleep in his bed with him for the rest of the night. Of course I let him, and on a different night, my brother asked me if he could sleep in my bed. I was almost asleep when I felt something touching the bottom of my foot, in the corner of it, and move up towards my toes about an inch. I thought it might have been my brother's toe, so I told him to quit. He claimed not to have done anything. Dismissively, I said whatever and to just knock it off, when it happened again. Chris, I tell him, when he insists he's not doing anything. That's when something full on grabbed my foot. We both began kicking and screaming like never before. At this point, my younger sister was around, and she was maybe six months old, and the house was not large by any means. Everyone in that house should have been woken up by our combined yelling, but no one did. After what was meant to be about five minutes, but more likely probably ten seconds, we got the panicked courage to get out of bed and run to my mum, who was still sound asleep in the next room. Sobbing, we told her what happened in between breaths. She believed us, and we slept in the living room that night. On another night, I was 14 years old and alone in the house. I thought I would treat myself. I moved the chair to the middle of the living room to better see the TV, and I was sitting there watching Are You Being Served, having a good old time, when movement out of the corner of my eye caught my attention. I turned my head, and I saw who I initially thought was my brother Chris. He was in the next room past the living room, motioning his hand for me to follow him. So I started doing that, following him through the house, and every room he entered and exited through, he turned and motioned with his hand. I thought that was weird, but we were kids. Through the next room he was in, and into the kitchen, and then the laundry room, and then the bathroom. He went on turning around at every room, making sure I was following him. I make my way to the laundry room, and I clearly see him standing in front of the sink, with the door below the sink open. He was standing behind that little door, one hand on the top of the door, the other hand waving at me as if to say goodbye, and was smiling hard. I thought it was very weird, and took a step forward, but then he stopped waving, and knelt down and got under the sink. Now we're not very big kids, there was no way he should have been able to get under there. The door closed and I went into the bathroom and quickly opened that little door under the sink. I'm sure anyone can imagine what happened next. He wasn't there. At that house, I saw a doppelganger of my mum too, and one of my sister Chelsea, but those are nothing compared to what I just saw. I also had sleep paralysis on many different occasions. I never saw anything. I just couldn't move anything but my eyes, and believe me, that's scary enough. I don't know what entity that was, but I hope it never comes back. Both of the houses ended up being torn down. I often wonder what happened to all the entities after a haunted house gets demolished. This didn't happen to me, but happened to my brother Kyle. When our parents were going through the very early stages of divorce, 
my two brothers and I were split up between family members for a while. Kyle went to stay at one of our aunt's houses for a few weeks or so, and this is what he told me, and he's adamant about it happening. Kyle said that every night he stayed there sleeping on the couch, the TV would always cut to static at about 3am without fail, whether it was on or off. He could hear footsteps circling him slowly, a small banging on the walls occasionally. He said that he would see a dark shadow pass by the window, outside all around the house, sometimes stopping to stare inside the house. My brother was young at the time, so he said he did his best to hide it, but occasionally peeking his head out, only to see about 30 feet from the window a pair of unblinking white-slash-teal eyes staring back at him. They would stare at him for about 10 seconds or so before vanishing, until they appeared the next night. Kyle said that the activity always started and stopped between 3 and 4 a.m. One night he woke up to find that he couldn't move, as if something was holding him down. He felt like he was suffocating, and the room was filled with an overwhelming sense of dread. He could hear a low growling coming from somewhere in the room. Eventually, he was able to break free and ran out the house. Kyle never stayed at that house again after that night and he never spoke about the experiences to our aunt or anyone else. The house was eventually sold, and as far as we know, it was later demolished. Good riddance. I was just an innocent fourth grader when this unforgettable incident took place. It was just a regular day, nothing out of the ordinary. Our house was filled with the joy and chatter of relatives who had come to visit. Little did I know that this particular gathering would leave a lasting mark on my mind. So we had all gathered in the master bedroom. The atmosphere was relaxed, and I was folding clothes. I carefully folded a piece of clothing when my eyes were suddenly drawn to the corner of the room. From my vantage point on the bed's edge, I had a clear view of the smaller bedroom's door which stood ajar. That was when my heart skipped a beat, as in that smaller bedroom I could see a dark silhouette emerging from the adjoining common room and it stealthily slipped into the smaller bedroom. It moved with an otherworldly grace and sent shivers down my spine. My blood turned cold and fear washed over me. So much so, that night I couldn't sleep, and the thought of stepping into that room filled me with a profound sense of dread. I tried to rationalize the encounter. Was it a trick of the light? A figment of my imagination, or was there something more sinister lurking within the walls of our home? But despite my attempts to debunk this, it remains etched in my memory and still a mystery. And that's the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you liked it. You can tell me you liked it in those comments. That's magical. A huge thank you to all my members and patrons whose names you can see on screen. And if you want even more content, be sure to subscribe and press the bell icon and click one of these links for, for more content. But until next time, see you soon. Stay awesome. Bye.